Alright guys, in today's review I'm going to be going over a test light that I picked up on Amazon. Now I'll be putting a link in the description if you guys want to go check it out yourself. So the reason I picked up this test light is as you can see it comes with a variety of probes. It comes with a hook probe, a piercing probe, this one right here. It comes with a short probe and it comes with an extra long probe, which is this guy. So I haven't even opened it yet, so I don't even know if it's an LED or incandescent because it doesn't even say it on the box. So what I'm going to do now for you guys is actually go ahead and open it. And then we're going to go through it and see how it feels and if it's actually worth the, the money. I paid $31 for this, if I'm not mistaken. So, and if it's an LED, it's kind of a downer, but we might be able to convert it to an incandescent if needed. So that's what we're going to uh, check right now. All right guys, so now that we have it unwrapped, we're just gonna go over the, uh, some basic little things about the test light and give you guys my take on it and if it's actually worth the, the $31 that it is on Amazon. And just the fact that it has interchangeable leads is a pretty big plus for me, especially since I, I love using test lights for my diagnostics. So let's just, uh, with that being said, let's just get started. So we have the short probe. The, short, the probes are actually pretty heavy. They're, they have some weight to them, so it's not a, it doesn't feel like it's a cheap quality metal. So I don't think that you guys are gonna have to take and sharpen up the tips uh, very often. As you guys can tell, the tips are pretty sharp. They're pretty pointy. The threads, they look like uh, they'll last quite a bit. It doesn't look like if you guys will be able to strip them by putting them in. Or tightening them but of course if you guys over torque them with like pliers or something like that it's for sure that it's gonna break it so to take and change the leads you just take in you unscrew put in the new lead and that's it and it goes the same way with the piercing probe this was the main reason I bought this test light was for piercing probe. So, piercing probe is a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say more difficult to put in, but don't forget you have this area right here. So, now the quality of the plastic, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's the best quality, but I wouldn't say it's the cheapest quality either. And in order to get the piercing probe to work properly, to get around your wire. You guys have to take and pull and then bring it down to pierce, as you can see right there, okay? So, and with the piercing probe, you can actually just use it as a uh, test light too. So it's pretty cool, it, it has a dual function. So you take your, uh, take your wire, put your wire in, Make sure it's a decent sized wire. It doesn't seem to work too good with the small wires. But then you just take and you pull onto it. And then it's pierced. And then you go ahead and you get your reading. From what I can tell, I would like to see this area a little bit smaller for the smaller gauge wires because it doesn't seem to be really working with the smaller ones. It works fine with the big wires. As you can tell, here's a thicker, a bigger gauge wire. Take and you pull onto it, and it pierces it perfectly. So there's no issue there. And then when you push up you to remove it. Now the hole that leaves is very, very small. Okay, like a little bit of a, a liquid electrical tape fix that right up, and you guys won't have to worry about anything. Now, the overall length with the cable is about six feet. If I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna just measure with my arms, guys. Sorry about this. It's about to six feet with from with the cable and the probe and everything with the longest probe and everything put on. Okay, it does come with a pretty uh, long cable. The alligator clip that is onto it is of decent size and quality. Uh, 
and as you can see they crimped uh, the wire, they didn't solder it, so at least they took the initiative of crimping it. Because solder can actually break in after a while, so it's just better to have them crimped. The tension on the alligator clip is... It's good. Uh, it has a good spring tension. So if you guys take it and you guys put it on something, it's actually going to hold it and it's not going to just... You know... I had to put some force on that to rip it off, so... That's, a, that's another good sign. Now, we'll take off the piercing probe. Oh no, we can actually leave the piercing probe on. And I have a battery. And this uh, LED, I don't even know. I think it's an LED test light, but it doesn't even say on the box or on the description on Amazon. So I think it's just an LED. And apparently it's supposed to have a sonar, uh, not sonar, sorry. A, um, a buzzer so when you guys uh, are connected uh, it'll buzz when it, it finds uh, power and it lights up red Let's try to get that for you guys okay and we're gonna take and we're gonna move it over to this one and we'll take and move it to the ground so what I don't like about it is that it does not change uh, tone, so you have no idea on if you are if you have a power or a ground. So that would be a downfall onto that. Uh, besides that, look, it lighting up red or lighting up green, blue, black, uh, purple. It doesn't matter what color the LED is. It's just to let you know that there is something there. If you know how to hook up your your test light to a battery or a source, to, and as you're poking around. You should know what you're looking for. If you're looking for a ground, well, if it lights up, that means you got your ground. If it doesn't, then your ground's not there. So, that it's up to you to. It's not going to be up to the tool to determine what you're testing for. It's going to be up to you. So, with that being said, I'm actually uh, I'm quite impressed with the way it is, and the probe is actually spring loaded, so it's not just like pull, push and pull, and. One thing that I would suggest, if you guys aren't a big fan of LEDs, you guys can actually just take and remove the internals. Like this. There is a spring. Take and you guys can get either get a longer spring or just uh, take an old LED test like that you guys have. Like I have this one. And I can actually take my internals of this one and put it in here. And that way I could have an LED test light with, uh, not an LED test light, an incandescent test light with probes. So, because so far I haven't seen a incandescent test light with probes, but then again, I haven't been able to search all Amazon or all over the place for uh, test lights. This one I have had for, I'd say a good like eight years, nine years. And the bulb actually burnt out on me like this year. So now back to the one off that I just purchased. We're gonna take and put everything back together. So that's pretty much it for this review, guys. There's not much more to to go on. I want been wanting to use this, but I want to show you guys this test light first before I actually went and uh, used it. I want to show you guys the unboxing. I wanted to show you guys my basic thoughts onto it. Like I said, it is an LED test light and not very many people are fond of LED test lights. Me personally, I really don't like LED test lights. The only time that I will use an LED test light is when I could actually damage uh, com uh, components. And you have to know what you're testing in order to know if you should be using an LED test light or if you can just go ahead and use an incandescent test light. That's up to you and it's not going to be the test light's fault if something gets damaged. Just remember that, okay? You're the technician working on the vehicle and you're the one using the tools. So if something gets damaged, you overlook something is what I'm trying to say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you guys next time.